Do you see the uh, microphone is uh, lively? Yeah. Yes, and the, one, yeah. Okay. Two, good. One, one, so everything's two, working good. Yeah. All right. Let's let's go for it then. So, Jarek, uh, yes. if you were to buy a camera today, which system would you go with? <laughs> Most definitely Fuji XT2. We're at a coffee shop in Benton with my buddy Yarek. Is it Yarek or Jarek or what? Yarek. Oh, why didn't you correct me before, man? Some people online are saying that Sin Like D is uh, kind of difficult to uh, get correct colors from, that when they work with it in post that um, it's difficult to get good skin tones and that uh, the natural photo style is much easier for them to uh, grade and color correct. So we'll be sharing uh, a lot of clips with you straight out of the camera, ungraded, uh, under a wide variety of different lighting conditions, in daylight, in the shade, um, under fluorescent lights, under tungsten lights, uh, sometimes all of the above. We'll be sharing the clips with you straight out of the camera without any color correction. You can view the results yourselves and decide whether uh, Sin Like D is really uh, all that bad. There's been a renewed interest in Sin Like D ever since EOS HD forum member BTM Pix released a hack enabling the photo style on cameras such as the Lumix GX80, the GX85, and a number of other Panasonic cameras. We'll also be talking a bit about the Ceramonic SRAX100 microphone mixer, uh, the Roadlink Filmmaker Kit, uh, the Color Finale plugin for Final Cut Pro, exposing to the right, and a number of other topics. I hope you stay uh, with us. I hope you're not in frail health because this video is gonna last some 20 minutes. Some of you may be wondering why it is I went with the X-ray color checker. After all, it's a pretty expensive piece of plastic and cardboard. Um, it runs uh, somewhere around $128 in the United States if you get it from BH Photo. And in Vietnam, it runs almost $175. I ended up purchasing mine from a retailer on eBay in Germany and it arrived at my place in just a few days so I was really happy with the service. Uh, but the answer to why I ended up going with the X-Ray Color Checker uh, goes back a couple months when a buddy of mine over in the forums at, over at EOS HD had recommended I take a look at Paul Leeming's work over at DVX User. Um, Paul Leeming had developed a bunch of LUTs including uh, for Panasonic's Vlog, as well as for the Sin Like D photo style, which is uh, the flattest uh, picture profile available on the Lumix G85. But I realized right away that if I wanted to take full advantage of those LUTs, that I'd have to white balance more carefully than the way I'd been doing for the past couple of years, which was just eyeballing it. Um, so I started looking into neutral cards, color, color cards, and so on like that when I came across the X-Rite Color Checker. Um, the X-Rite Color Checker has the advantage that it's compatible with Denver Riddle's um, Color Finale, which is a plug-in for Final Cut, which allows you to get pretty accurate colors right away in post. And after you use the color match feature, you can go ahead and fine tune the colors and uh, do extra grading after that. It was because of Paul Leeming that I decided to use Sin Like D. And it was also from him that I first learned the principles of exposing to the right. There isn't even consensus on what constitutes um, exposing to the right, let alone a properly exposed image. Some people believe you should use 90% zebras, others 100% zebras. Uh, some people believe that uh, you should reduce exposure just until the zebras disappear from the subject's face. Um, in my opinion, uh, you should reduce zebras just until they disappear from the important highlights in the image. Uh, so there are varying ideas about uh, exposing to the right, so I think that adds a lot uh, to the confusion. There might be another reason why shooters avoid uh, exposing to the right, and that is they may be using the standard or natural profiles on the Lumix cameras. Uh, those are quite a bit more contrasty than Sun Like D and uh, giving a touch more exposure, and uh, especially in contrasty situations, uh, could lead to uh, clipping of the highlights. I'll share some clips with you that I shot over the weekend with uh, Yarek over in District 5 last weekend. 
unfortunately there was hardly anybody around we went to the uh, we went to the Chinese market we went to an apartment building walking around inside um, we went to a cafe and uh, we went to a cafe uh, there was just nobody around there um, but uh, I eyeballed the color on each of the shots uh, I think it looks pretty good but it's still uh, much easier to use a neutral gray card to adjust the white balance than to just eyeball it every time or guesswork. This morning uh, we're supposed to meet up with a buddy of ours, Dave, but uh, he's running a little late. Uh, we're going to head on out to uh, District 5, which is uh, the Chinese district uh, famous for the uh, Chinatown, right? Is yeah, that Chinatown? Kind of market. Yeah, there's a couple of markets over yeah, there. Yeah, they filmed a movie there, didn't they? Uh, possibly. Yeah, they yeah. filmed the movie there, Johnny Chi Win, but uh, it never got uh, shown in theaters. Do you hear no, about that? No, no, no. Wonder yeah, the why. government didn't approve of it. Uh, it was too violent, didn't uh, reflect yeah, yeah, yeah. the no, Asian values. Yeah. We're here at a temple here in uh, District 5. It's uh, really beautiful. They got the incense kicking in the back there. Some nice wall uh, decorations. Yarek and I are stopping at a little uh, cafe here. It's uh, hot as hell this morning. There he is somewhere in the background. Yeah, you can see him sulking. Right now, Yarek and I are exploring some of the uh, apartments, uh, some of the dwellings across from the uh, market in District 5. See if there's any human habitation here. So the question we want to answer today is number one. Is the color checker faster and more accurate than white balancing either by eye or using the auto white balance on the Lumix G85? And question number two, is this small piece of plastic with little cardboard color squares really worth $200? My first efforts at manually white balancing using a neutral card that comes with the X-ray color checker were every bit as bad or even worse than my old slapdash method of uh, white balancing manually using the Calvin uh, scale and the camera. So eventually I came to rely on the camera's own built-in uh, custom white balance feature. It's uh, more accurate than I can do by eye and uh, certainly a whole lot faster. What follows are some comparisons between using the auto white balance feature in a camera, some of the presets like sunny and cloudy, using the custom white balance feature, as well as manually white balancing using the X-ray color checker. Okay, this time we're using uh, X-ray color checker to white balance the shot. Uh, it's pretty dim in here. In this cafe, we're shooting at uh, f1.4 at ISO 200. Uh, this time we're using AWB to white balance the shot. Now we're using the cloudy setting to white balance the shot. And this time we're using custom white balance to balance the shot. We're just waiting out another afternoon rain shower here so we can get back to our testing. Now we're gonna see a comparison between uh, natural and Sin Like D photo styles. Right now you're seeing the Sin Like D uh, photo style. Uh, it is not exposed to the right. Now we're in natural photo style, the same exposure. One of the advantages of the X-ray color checker video passport is its size. It's uh, very compact. Uh, no reason not to take it with you everywhere. You can easily fit it in your back pocket or uh, throw it in your backpack. Um, so in that regard, it's very convenient. On the other hand, I find that the white balance target is uh, too small, it requiring you to move very close to the camera in order to uh, adjust your white balance. I think that a larger uh, white balance uh, target would be much more useful. I've been doing uh, gear talks every weekend with my buddy Yarek, but yeah. using just one uh, lavalier mic isn't going to cut it. At first it seemed like the Roadlink was a pretty good value for $400. You've got a really compact system. It works up to around 100 meters, I, I think. And the sound quality is 
pretty good for something so tiny. But uh, now that I need uh, two lavalier mics for the talks we're going to be having every weekend, uh, the costs add up pretty quickly. We're talking a uh, total of $800. Uh, I didn't realize when I first purchased the Roadlink Filmmaker kit that the receiver can accept more than one uh, microphone or, and one transmitter at a time, so you've got to buy an entire kit. Each time you want to add another lavalier mic, you've got to purchase the transmitter and the receiver along with it. In addition to that, the Lumix G85 can only accept one microphone input, so now you've got to look at a mixer. So I found a really good solution right here. Um, it's the uh, Ceramonic SR AX100. Um, you can see it's a very small device. Um, it's got um, two adjustable rubberized knobs. The entire unit is made completely of metal. And you've got the inputs here for a couple of microphones. On the bottom, you've got the cold shoe mount, which is uh, also, as far as I can tell, made uh, completely of metal here. And on the three sides, you've got uh, three cold shoe mounts. So you can attach two lab mic uh, receivers and I guess one more microphone for ambient sound. Anyhow, I went ahead and contacted dozens of retailers and distributors here in Vietnam and Hanoi and Saigon and Da Nang and not a single shop has the, uh, road, uh, the Roadlink Filmmaker kit in stock. So I went ahead and booked a flight for Kuala Lumpur for tomorrow morning. Uh, there's a shop there. They assured me that they'll hold one for me. Um, the kit's going to cost about 415 uh, U.S. dollars. The flight tickets uh, were a bit more expensive than I thought. Uh, they're going to run me about 140 dollars round trip, and plus I've got the hotel room for a night. So altogether, I'll be spending uh, over 600 dollars for a second Roadlink filmmaker kit. But I think it's worth it. I I can't really wait um, until July or August to get one from a shop here in Saigon. It's uh, Tuesday morning about 6.30. I'm supposed to be at the airport three hours early to catch a flight to Kuala Lumpur. I booked my flight through a company in Canada called Flight Network. I, I think they're ripping me off, to be honest. I think I'm paying 50% more. I'm flying with uh, Vietjet, which is a budget airline. Um, it should be about $100 to fly to Kuala Lumpur, but whatever. Hi everybody, talking to you from uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia now. Uh, I got here a few hours ago at the KL International. Took about an hour by uh, taxi to get to the uh, place to purchase my Roadlink microphone. But super nice people there, they carry everything. Uh, they've got a lot of black magic cameras tripods, uh, super microphone, Sennheiser, a uh, lot of different sliders and all kinds of gadgets. But I had to drag myself out of there. I just got the uh, Roadlink Filmmaker kit. And uh, the young guy there, Dave, was super helpful. He uh, drove me all the way to my uh, hotel, which is about a 15 minute drive from the store. and. Uh, the uh, people over at the hotel recommended uh, this Pakistani Indian restaurant. So I'm here in the pouring rain. Uh, I feel right at home here. It's just like Saigon with the pouring rain, right? Anyhow, I got this uh, bread dish here. It's got eggs in it or something like that. Uh, some egg and bread dish. A little uh, dipping sauce, uh, make it all tasty and everything. I got a bowl of uh, delicious hot soup, which uh, I'm told is just a little bit spicy. I can't show you what's in there or I'll end up uh, pouring it all over my camera and lens. And then uh, what uh, Indian uh, Pakistani meal would be complete without a huge plate of uh, rice. I haven't eaten all day, so I'm pretty starving. So we're going to end it here and we'll talk to you later. What's incredible is that even though the noise levels here from the construction in the street are probably approaching like 200 decibels or something crazy, and I'm on the first floor of the restaurant here, out on the street the construction workers aren't even wearing any protection for their hearing, 
They're not wearing any face masks, even though there's dust billowing up in the air, and no eyewear either. Yesterday morning, I was setting up my tripod. It was uh, fully extended at about five feet when my ceramic mic mixer, along with the two Roadlink receivers, went crashing to the ground. Um, I was standing on a wooden flooring uh, near some bookstores on Book Street, and amazingly, uh, neither the mixer nor the two receivers were harmed at all. They both seemed to be working fine. But I would caution anybody who's thinking of pick, picking up uh, one of these really excellent ceramic mixers uh, that they find a way to make sure that the um, cold shoe mount is secure because uh, no matter how much you uh, tighten it, it's never really securely attached to the camera. I've gotten several requests from viewers uh, asking to see more footage from the Fuji X-T2, but to be quite honest, uh, without the built-in stabilization, without an, a functioning app that can record at a higher resolution than 720p, without a fully articulating screen, um, and without zebras to check my exposure, it's uh, very difficult to vlog with the Fuji. I hope watching this video encourages some of you to go out and do your own tests, do your own experiments, try out different settings, different exposures, different photo styles, and find out what works best for you and your camera.